Uh, hey gang, it's uh, Sam here with time for another video. Uh, today I thought um, I'd talk about some of the valuable work that's been done on uh, ceremonial magic, uh, the Western occult tradition, I guess you can call it, uh, from which uh, a variety of, of uh, neo-pagan traditions have sprung, but which is still quite vi valuable in its own uh, in its own right through organizations like the Ordo Templi Orientis, the uh, uh, Order of the Golden Dawn, and its and its various offshoots. Um, there's been some very good uh, uh, work done, especially uh, especially recently. There's a couple of authors. Uh, Walter uh, Honeygraf is one uh, who I don't unfortunately have any of his work. Uh, who's very well regarded, and uh, and several others. Um, but what I'm going to do is, as usual, is do a little walk through some work I've got in my library that will be uh, useful to you, and uh, we'll just uh, proceed from there. I assume that uh, if you get any of these books, you'll look at the index and look at the bibliography and do a little bit of follow-up on on areas that uh, particularly interest you. Um, let me start with uh, this book, um, Jocelyn Godwin's The Theosophical Enlightenment, published by a, a State University of New York Press, which has a an excellent um, esoteric uh, history uh, publishing uh, publishing uh, record. Um, I really uh, really quite impressed by the work that they've got uh, in uh, 1994. This is um this is just an excellent history of the uh, uh, main players, uh, main ideas, main books uh, in the uh, Western uh, Western occult tradition. Uh, principally the Anglo-American tradition, but uh, they do talk. He does talk about some of the uh, French and European uh, European stuff as well. Um, uh, folks like uh, Huysmans uh, uh, come in. Eliphas uh, Al Levy, of course. Um, the uh, although this is this is a, a single volume uh, history, uh, he, he manages to to give short biographies of a very substantial number of the main players, gives you an idea of who was talking to whom, who influenced whom, and gives a uh, genealogy of, uh, of, the, uh, of the Western occult up to, from about uh, 1740 up to uh, about 1900. Uh, just an, an excellent place to start. I really like this book. For uh, the um, rootstock of uh, much of the uh, modern uh, occult, uh, the uh, uh, the groups that we're most familiar with, including the Wiccan movement, uh, owes a great deal to this, uh, to the uh, uh, the late Victorian uh, uh, occultists, uh, especially the Order of the Golden Dawn. Uh, this uh, book, um, Alison Butler's, whoops, Alison Butler's um, Victorian Occultism and the Making of Modern Magic, uh, published by uh, by Pelgrave, which is just such an excellent publishing house. Um, let's see, this one. Uh, let me find the date. It's fairly recent, 2011. Uh, it's expensive. Uh, one problem with Palgrave is that their books are bloody expensive. This one's about $110 or something like that, uh, U.S. Uh, look for it in your university library and give it a thorough reading. It really is a splendid book uh, dealing with uh, not just uh, the content of The Order of the Golden Dawn's uh, uh, ritual and uh, the influences and so on, but the way that the Golden Dawn took um, older traditions, especially uh, the uh, Renaissance traditions of uh, Cornelius Agrippa uh, and, uh, and others, and uh, Egyptian um, ideas and various other things that were in vogue at the time, and made a whole new uh, magical synthesis from them uh, that uh, has been uh, quite workable and a um, 
just an excellent uh, contribution to the to the whole the whole field. Uh, Butler's book is just just splendid. Uh, yes, I, I. It's expensive, but it's splendid. Um, for a little bit more more focused, less gen less general um, stuff, let's talk about the uh, mid. Uh, the mid-Victorian period, uh, up to about 1920 or thereabouts, um, radical spirits, um, uh, spiritualism and women's rights in 19th century America by Anne Brodie, uh, published by Indiana University Press. Here, I'll just wave the. It's a uh, it's a very good uh, look at the intersection between the mass uh, spiritualist movement, uh, which was a uh, a mass movement involving millions of, of people and uh, radical movements particularly around women's rights in the uh, 1860s to, 18, uh, to 1890s um, in the United States. There is a, a companion volume, so to speak, um, a, another book that deals with uh, these issues in the United Kingdom uh, called The Darkened Room uh, which was written by um, Alex Owen. Um, depending on which uh, which geographic area you're interested in, uh, they're they're both both uh, very good, uh, very good pieces of history. Uh, an excellent book by a Canadian author, uh, Divine Feminine: uh, Theosophy and Feminism in England by Joy Dixon. Uh, published by Johns Hopkins University Press. Uh, let me see if I can find a date. Uh, 2001. Um, really good. Uh, again, deals with the intersection of uh, occultism, in this case mostly the Theosophical Society, and uh, and the feminist movement, uh, the second uh, first wave feminist movement in the United Kingdom, the the suffer, suffrage, suffragists uh, movement. Um, really interesting book. Uh, there's uh, there's a lot of, of depth to it. Uh, excellent history, um, and again, it's a good place to find to look at um, a different side of. Uh, people whom you know from the historical record as uh, like feminist, uh, feminist and uh, suffrage um, uh, activists. Uh, this crossover was also really important here in Canada, although uh, Dixon does not does not deal with it. Um, many of the uh, prominent suffragists uh, in the, in Canada were also involved in occult movements, particularly the Theosophical Society at the time. Uh, this one. Uh, Alex Owens, The Place of Enchantment. Let me just wave that at you. There you go. Uh, British Occultism and the Culture of the Modern. Uh, deals uh, uh, very in a very interesting way with the way that um, occult ideas influence the development of modernism and the modernist uh, worldview uh, in the... Uh, Turn of the century to uh, to about 1920. Um, some very interesting things to say about uh, Alistair Crowley, the uh, noted occultist, and uh, and his influence as a particularly modern uh, modern thinker, uh, taking uh, a scient scientific or scientific view of occultism, which is also something that was quite prominent in the Order of the Golden Dawn, the desire to uh, make uh, uh, magical ideas um, also a part of a, a scientific uh, uh, outlook, worldview. Um, again, uh, uh, very well written and, and, and quite interesting. Um, depends how much background that you have in uh, the uh, theosophy or the history of of the time, but I think you'll fi you might find it uh, find it particularly interesting if you're a fan of Uncle Al's. Now, a couple of a um, couple of uh, reference books, books that uh, really, if you're interested in ceremonial magic uh, or the Western occult tradition, uh, you really have to own. If you don't, well, go out and get them. Uh, they're they're inexpensive, reasonably inexpensive. Uh, the Golden Dawn, 
uh, published the, in the, this edition published by Llewellyn. It's by Israel Regardi with uh, with in this case various uh, various other editorial um, uh, stuff. It's uh, the uh, the full set of rituals and many of the teaching materials of the original Golden Dawn uh, uh, organization. Uh, a a a uh, the Golden Dawn, in case you don't know. Is the uh, was an occult order that was started uh, in uh, the 1880s, late 1880s, uh, and collapsed uh, about 20 years later. Uh, it was enormously influential, partly because of the quality of the people who uh, became members. Uh, people like uh, Yeats, uh, the the poet, uh, uh, Annie Horniman. Uh, uh, of, of Florence uh, Farr, uh, I, I, Alistair Crowley for, uh, for a while. He eventually got thrown out because he pissed off the, the, the uh, leaders of the organization a bit too much. Um, this, so anyhow, yes, this is uh, the, uh, a foundation for uh, Western occultism, at least in the Anglo-English-speaking uh, Anglo world. Okay, and this one, yes, it's a tome, but The Three Books of Occult Philosophy by uh, Henry Cornelius Agrippa, um, uh, Renaissance, uh, late, late medieval and Renaissance uh, magical uh, grimoires. It's, uh, it is a, a foundation source book. Uh, there's a few things that came into Western occultism, uh, notably the interest in Egyptian magic, which the Golden Dawn brought in, uh, and the uh, interest in uh, 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 Jewish uh, mysticism, the Kabbalah, uh, that, uh, that was uh, brought in a little bit later than Agrippa in the 1740s. Uh, but, but basically, this is where uh, uh, Western occultism uh, Starts. This is the foundation stuff, right? Sigil magic, uh, astrological stuff, uh, numerology, uh, different magical techniques. Uh, you name it. Uh, you name it. He's got something on it, pretty well. And uh, magical alphabets and other other trivial stuff like that. Um, Yes, uh, get a copy of this. Uh, I don't know how much it costs, about 50 or 60 bucks, something like that. Uh, the Golden Dawn book is about the same price. So that's, that's some, some uh, excuse me, some source material, uh, some uh, foundation source material. Now, I always find that uh, uh, theoretical stuff and and all that kind of stuff needs to be grounded a little bit uh, in practice. Um, and uh, I'm always interested in, in, you know, people who do this, do things um, like what kind of people are they? How do they learn about doing it? So I'm going to talk about a few, uh, a few uh, biographies um, that are entertaining as heck, uh, worth reading and give you some, some insight into, uh, into these foundation uh, foundation ideas and of Western occultism. Uh, let me start with uh, a person who deserves to be better known, uh, Pascal Beverly uh, Randolph. Uh, Pascal Beverly Randolph was a spiritualist, uh, a Rosicrucian, and a sex magician. Um, a lot of his ideas uh, became uh, ancestral to the Ordo Templi Orientis through various permutations. Um, he was just he was just an interesting character, fascinating character. Uh, this book is by John Patrick Deveni, uh, published by uh, State University of New York Press, um, and uh, gives uh, in two thousand and two, two thousand and no nineteen ninety seven. All right, I got it in two thousand and two. Um, it has, uh, as well as uh, a, an interesting biography of the fellow. Um, quite a bit of his writing, of his of his uh, uh, materials on 
uh, on sex magic, um, a list of all of his publications for future uh, for future uh, uh, research. Um, I have a collection of his stuff as well. Interesting guy. Uh, Women of the Golden Dawn, uh, Rebels and Priestesses by Mary K. Greer, uh, published by Park Street Press in... Uh, let's see. Oh, in 1995. Um, this has, uh, has biographies, actually close to hagiographies. They, they, she really has, uh, has, uh, admire, a tendency to admire, uh, these, uh, these women and their accomplishments. And they were, in fact, quite accomplished people. Um, uh, but, uh, it's, it's very worth a read. Um, uh, Maud Gon, uh, uh, Mona Bergson Mathers, Annie Horniman, and Florence Farr, all of whom were quite accomplished, uh, uh, interesting, interesting people, and uh, and significant figures in uh, the Order of the Golden Dawn and its development. Uh, in particular, uh, uh, Mathers, uh, Miona Mathers, who was married to uh, uh, McGregor Mathers, the uh, the uh, uh, founder and leader of. Uh, a founder and leader of the Golden Dawn. Um, it also gives you some insight into uh, women's uh, roles and possibilities in the occult orders of the day. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely worth a read. Um, so there's that one. I'll just put it over here. Now on to some more contemporary folk. Uh, this is just a hoot. Really interesting, interesting uh, a biography. Sex and Rockets, The Occult World of Jack Parsons by John Carter. Uh, and uh, it's published by uh, Feral House. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a biography of Jack Parsons, who was um, the founder of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in uh, the United States, a rocket scientist, and also the head of uh, the only viable OTO group for, uh, for a long time uh, in uh, Pasadena, California. Uh, really, really interesting guy. Uh, strange, quirky, uh, but uh, brilliant, and uh, just an interesting biography. It's, it's worth a read. Um, his uh, his writings. He didn't uh, leave a lot of writing behind, but some of it is very interesting indeed. Uh, he uh, at the same time as um, as uh, uh, Gerald Gardner was getting started, getting witchcraft started in the United Kingdom, uh, Parsons was writing about a witchcraft revival in uh, in California. Um, Parsons is a, is a little bit more uh, hard edged uh, in style, but uh, it interesting parallels, really interesting parallels. I. I would love to see if there were any correspondence by the two of them available anywhere. Um, this is a an interesting an interesting uh, autobiography. Uh, it's a Fire Child, the life and magic of Maxine Sanders, the Witch Queen, and it's published by um, Mandrake uh, Mandrake Publishing, a small publishing house in the United Kingdom, who has done some really good stuff actually. Uh, first edition, November 2007, second, 2008, which is one I've got. Um, Maxine Sanders, uh, for those who don't know, uh, was uh, the partner of Alex Sanders, uh, one of the uh, leading uh, promoters of, uh, of witchcraft and Wicca uh, during the uh, late 1960s. Um, Sanders was a, was a flamboyant um, and... Uh, and a really uh, a flamboyant and really strange guy who was a very good, uh, very good uh, at publicity. Uh, Maxine um, was pretty much his uh, was his second in command, a much more interesting person than she presented herself as at the time. This is interesting because it gives uh, insight into the uh, occultism of the time. It's not strictly the Western occult movement. It's uh, it's uh, it's Wicca. Uh, here's uh, another biography. This is the last book on my pile here. Wormwood Star, The Magical Life of Marjorie Cameron. 
uh, uh, written by Spencer Kansa, published by Mandrake and uh, yeah, 2011. Now, Marjorie Cameron was uh, was uh, an artist. Uh, she was a partner of uh, of Jack Parsons, involved in the the occult. Uh, uh, the Order of Temple Orientis and the Occult Milieu in California for many years. Uh, she also, uh, just an interesting character in her own right, uh, uh, interesting artist. Uh, and again, by reading through this, you get some idea of who was around and what kind of connections people had, uh, had with one another uh, in the development of the... Um, the broader neo-pagan and and occult uh, occult movement of the time. So that's my quick little run through uh, uh, some of the books in my library. I mean, I have uh, I have other books on ceremonial uh, magic and the Western magical tradition that are more uh, more specialized and specific, I think, than these are. Um, but I think this would give you uh, a good place to start and uh, some idea as to. Uh, you know, what people are talking about when they talk about things like the uh, OTO or uh, the, uh, <coughs> the Order of the Golden Dawn or, uh, or ceremonial magic and so on. So you take care of yourselves, guys. I'll see if I can, uh, if I can pull together uh, another video because it has been a little while. Meanwhile, uh, do not hesitate to go wandering through the rest of the videos uh, here on my site, I would uh, uh, I'd love to have uh, have more comments and more uh, uh, more just more readers. You know, it's it's um, it's sort of fun doing these things, but uh, but doing it just for myself isn't as much fun as if other people are involved. Take care now.